Welcome to another IGCSC physics video. Today we're discussing section 2 of general physics which is motion and today we're going to learn about displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration. We're also going to learn about scalar and vector quantities and speed, time and distance graphs and also about air resistance and gravity. So what is displacement? Well displacement just means to displace an object. So say if I have this marker over here and I move this marker northbound and I've displaced it from this point to this point. And I can denote this motion by writing it from, say, point A, where the marker was located. And then I displace it to point B. Now, displacement is just distance, but you have to specify a direction in which you've moved it to. So say I moved it, if we measure this, this is about 2.5 centimeters. So we moved it 2.5 centimeters to the north. Now distance is simply the description of how much we move an object. We don't specify the direction in which the object has moved. So say I have this blue marker and I have it on point A so we can mark this as A. And then I move this again 2.5 centimeters up there to point B. And then we don't have to specify the direction. We can just say that the distance that the marker traveled is 2.5 centimeters. Note that I haven't included the direction, so here I have north and I don't have any direction here. Therefore, this is the definition of distance, and this is displacement. So we know that distance is just a measurement of the difference in location from one point, say, A to B. And then if we measure that length, it's 2.5 centimeters. So we know this is distance. But the difference between distance and displacement is that displacement is distance plus direction. So you specify a direction with the distance that the object has traveled. So we move from A to B, which is the distance part. But then we also specify the direction, which is north. So this is a, an example of displacement. So now that we know the difference between distance and displacement, let's talk about what scalar quantities and vector quantities are and what the difference between them is. A scalar quantity is a measurement without a direction. But a vector quantity is something which has measurement and a direction. So if you look at the example back up here, we can see that at the distance we only have a measurement of 2.5 centimeters. At the same time for displacement we have 2.5 centimeters, but we also have a distance with the measurement of the direction. So here we have north, but we don't have any direction stated here, even though I moved the marker from A to B, which is north. So this is not a vector quantity, but a scalar quantity. While this quantity is a vector quantity because we have a direction specified. So let's talk about speed now. So what is speed? Well, if you define speed generally, we know that speed is just the rate at which an object is moving or is being displaced. So say you have a car that is traveling from point A to point B. And let's say that the distance that the car travels from point A to point B is it's one kilometer or a thousand meters. And we don't know how long it takes for this car to travel from A to B. So one may say that it took it an hour. Somebody else may say 30 minutes or half an hour. So if we look at these measurements that I've put here, we can say that based on the formula of speed, speed equals distance traveled over the time taken. We can find out the speed of this car at these two different times. So say, let's go with uh, 60 minutes or one hour, and the distance traveled will be 1,000 meters over the time in minutes. And if we put 1,000 over 60, we get 16.67 meters per minute. And this is the speed of the car. So you can see it's pretty slow. In one minute, the car travels only 16.67 meters. Let's say that it took the car to travel 1,000 meters in, say, 10 seconds, which seems more fair for a really fast car. So speed would be the distance over time. This is the proper formula, distance over time. And the total distance covered would be 1,000 meters over the time taken. Oh my bad, this is T. Uh, the time taken would be 10 seconds. And if we calculate that, we get 100 meters per second. So this is a really fast car, as you can see. So now that we have a clear idea of what speed is, let's talk about velocity. Well, velocity is simply speed, but it's with a direction. So say this car has a velocity from A to B, and the speed it had was 100 meters per second. So if the speed is 100 meters per second, we can say that it's also traveling eastbound because it's traveling from A to B. So we could say that this car has a velocity 
of 100 meters per second east. So to summarize velocity, we know that velocity is speed plus a given direction. So the speed here was 100 meters per second and the direction was eastbound. So we can say that velocity is a vector quantity because vector quantity has to have a direction. And on the other hand, speed is a scalar quantity because there is no direction. Now what about acceleration? Well, acceleration is similar to velocity except it's a change in velocity over time. So in mathematical terms, we can say that acceleration is written like this with an A over an arrow, and then that equals the change in velocity over change in time. Or you could say V final, the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the final time minus the time initial. So let's say we have a really fast car that is traveling from point A towards point B. Again, we have a direction, so we know that acceleration is a vector quantity because the object will be traveling from A to B. Let's say it's some car. And it's traveling from A when it's stationary. So the speed here would be zero meters per second. And then when it accelerates towards point B, its final velocity will be 20 meters per second. And let's say that the amount of time it took from A to B to accelerate from 0 to 20 meters per second is 20 seconds. And then we can apply the formula for acceleration. V final minus V initial over time final minus time initial. And the time initial would be 0 and the time final would be 20. So we know that V final is 20 minus the initial which is 0 over the final time which is 20 minus the initial time which is 0. And it's a simple problem, so if we do that, we get 20 over 20, which is equal to 1 meters per second over 1 second. And if we simplify this unit, we get 1 meter per second squared. So the unit of acceleration is the meter per second squared. So let's talk about free fall now. Let's say you have an airplane from which some person drops a ball. So let's say a ball is falling and here the speed is zero meters per second. And then as it continues to fall, say in the next second, it's 10 meters per second. And then in the next second, it's 20 meters per second. So it keeps going. And until it falls to the ground, the speed is eventually say 100 meters per second. So we can see that the speed is constantly changing with a rate of 10 meters per second squared. So that is the acceleration at which the ball is falling. So we could do this calculation by doing 100 meters per second minus 0 meters per second over the amount of time taken for that to happen. And it would be 10 seconds the total time because it's falling 10 meters per second every second, so it increases every time. So the total time is 10 seconds, and we get 10 meters per second squared. And this is the constant of acceleration of the Earth's gravity. Now this is only an ideal situation because we have no air resistance. So air resistance is an opposite force which tries to stop an object from accelerating downwards. So this object would essentially stop increasing in speed until it reaches a velocity which doesn't increase anymore. So say if this ball kept falling without any close ground, it kept falling down, it would eventually reach a velocity, say 600 meters per second. It's pretty fast. And then it wouldn't accelerate anymore and it would try to even slow down because the air is getting thicker and thicker. So it's trying to stop the ball from going down anymore. Now let's talk about some speed versus time graphs, which I mentioned in the intro. So here we have a velocity time graph in which we have a straight line. So we know that the gradient of this line is velocity over the change in time. And that is acceleration as we know by definition. So if it's a straight line, we know that the object is constantly accelerating, meaning that for every change in the interval of time, we're also changing at a constant interval of the velocity. So this is acceleration. Now here, it's the opposite, instead we're going downwards. So here we have deceleration. 
because there's a constant decline in velocity for every constant increase in time. Now here we have two more velocity time graphs. Let's look at this one. We can see that for every change in unit of time, there's no increase in velocity. It's just a straight line without any angle, so we can say that it has a constant velocity. Now for the second one, we can see that the line is completely down at the zero line. And for every change in time that is increasing, there is no increase in velocity. There is no velocity, and we can say that the object is stationary. Let's look at some distance time graphs. So here we have a simple distance time graph in which we have a line which has some angle. So we can see that it, for every change in unit of time, it, there's a change in distance for every unit in time. So we can say that the distance is constantly changing for every constant change in time. So this has a constant speed. Now for this graph it's the same except the line has a negative gradient or slope. For every increase in unit of time there's a decrease in unit of the distance. So we could say it's a constant speed except it has a negative gradient. And it's a return journey because the gradient is negative. Let's look at these two final distance time graphs. So for this one, we can see that it's a curve, it's not a straight line, which means that there isn't a constant change in distance for every constant change in time. So if we look at the gradient of this curve, we can see that it's close to flat, but then it gets closer to being vertical. So we can see that the distance over time for the slope, it's increasing. So the velocity is increasing, which means it's accelerating. So this is acceleration represented on a distance time graph. Now let's look at this one. We can see it's a straight line. And for every change in time, there is no change in distance. So this is just a stationary object. It's not moving at all. And I think this is it for 1.2. We covered all the things in this lesson and hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. Please leave a comment in the comment section so I can improve my videos and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.